Hi, thanks for the introduction. Um, so I'm Bruno Mervin, and I'm uh, an engineer by training, and I'm based at the Energy Research Center in the Faculty of Engineering at the University of Cape Town. Um, and I'm presenting a paper that is mainly a methodological paper, um, but since the case study that we used to demonstrate the methodologies um, related to um, regional trade, um, it, it, it fit well. And also it's a, it's a project, it's a paper that we did um, in collaboration with UNU Wider, um, who are um, involved in the, in, this, in the organization of the session. Um, so we thought it would um, be a good fit. <coughs> Um, so it's, I'm going to talk about so it's um, the case for imported hydro for South Africa. Um, so a bit of background on our electricity system, which uh, most of us here will be familiar with. Um, we mainly rely on, on coal to generate our electricity, <coughs> um, which is a problem from a CO2 point of view. Um, and um, we're in the process, or we'd like to increase... Um, access and we have shortages at the moment but the issues of shortages are, are more short to medium term and, and this um, exercise is looking more in the long term so we're not touching are uh, going to look at the, uh, the current um, problems with um, shortages of supply um, but we've had a recent uh, radical increases in the electricity price um, and looking ahead other than solving our short-term problems um, is environment and sustainability, so um, steering away from being so, so intensive from a CO2 point of view, um, diminishing coal reserves, um, and then finding um, cost-competitive alternatives that would provide energy security in the long term. <coughs> um, without, I mean, you know, so making sure uh, the electricity remains affordable to not damper growth, um, uh, employment, and welfare. Yeah. Um, so on the on the policy options, um, things that are on the table um, to constrain the the CO2 uh, emissions, the CO2 price, or tax level, or limits on the uh, production from um, coal power plants. Um, so, so ta tackling the coal directly is one option. Um, commitment to a nuclear program commit that is also on the table. Commitment to, uh, to support a gas infrastructure program, whether it would be gas coming into the, to, um, into the system via LNG or um, using our domestic resource if, if it exists. Um, commitment to nuclear program, a uh, renewable program that we've seen, um, or... Um, Opening the economy to uh, opening the system to um, f better utilizing the resources that we have in the region, and uncertainty that we face um, is is growth. Um, the the CO two constraint that uh, could be imposed externally on South Africa um, through various means, um, global energy commodity prices, um, the cost of, of of nuclear power plants, and um, risks of delays. And overruns, um, availability and, and cost of our domestic gas, um, the future cost of renewables, um, and whether, look on the last point, uh, whether those regional projects to uh, increase the utilization of our regional resource, would how to get those projects on um, actually happening, and whether they would materialize, and, and once they're up, um, to ensure that they don't carry too much uh, risk in, in supplying electricity to South Africa. Um, and this paper looks um, just on the policy side. We, we don't explore uh, so much the uncertainty. Um, we're doing other work that, that um, ex delves a bit on the uncertainty side, but this particular focus is looking at um, opening um, our electricity system to a much bigger share of imported electricity than we currently um, enjoy. And for that, we're, um, we, we're using a combination of models. Why? Um, we need, because we're looking at a, at a long term, so 2035 to 2050 um, horizon, uh, we need a, a tool that can do well um, out of sample, so we're not looking at uh, econometric type models um, for doing this analysis. Um, so models that are more kind of theoretically based, <coughs> and then um, we want a tool that can can capture not 
just the, the changes on the energy system, but the, the economy-wide e effects of, make, of making changes on the electricity system, because the, the changes that we're proposing, or that are on the plan, cutting away from, uh, in, in involve quite radical changes um, in the electricity supply uh, chain. Um, so the modeling tools that we have are either traditionally called top-down economic models, um, which have a general equilibrium, or the detailed energy systems model, partial equilibrium, such as the model that we use um, by ESCOM and DOE for the IRP. Um, <coughs> but both, um, system, both approaches have lim limitations. So the, the economic models give you the full picture, but the energy... Um, is not energy system is not well represented and it makes oversimplifications and fails to satisfy some basic uh, uh, energy conservation for principles, for example. Um, and energy system models have the detail and um, capture those um, uh, engineering realisms, but um, fail to capture kind of the feedbacks um, onto the rest of the economy. Um, so the different approaches that have been tried to try and and and, so, and kind of um, bridge that gap. Uh, so the the three approaches on the table are are uh, people have kind of tried to put more detail on the on the general equilibrium model um, at the cost of having less detail on the rest of the economy, um, or people have tried to do a, a, a macro component and and kind of tack that on an energy system. Um, but perhaps, um, at, well, the, 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 the platforms that are available at the moment don't provide the kind of detail that policymakers are are, are looking for. Um, so what we the approach we're taking here is to use two detailed models that um, that talk to each other. And the problem with that is you have those two detailed models; they might not be speaking about the same world because um, you have to kind of connect them at as many places as you can to make sure that they're internally co consistent. Um, and that's kind of the problem we, we're facing with the models, but anyway, we, we give it a shot. <coughs> so the, the general equilibrium model is the SAGE or ESAGE uh, model, um, which started off as a standard free recursive dynamic model, um, which has some fancy things like uh, the allocation of, of, of allocation of uh, investment to future capital is done endogenously um, and uh, employment um, is so there's uh, various uh, labor categories uh, very detailed a lot of different um, sectors uh, a lot of different income groups um, the some of the labor can be done um, and endogenously through upward sloping labor supply curves. Um, and then there was some extra work that was done by mainly by James Thurlow <coughs> when he was looking at the um, the CO2 tax for South Africa, um, where he kind of added more detail on the electricity side. Um, <coughs> uh, reconciling the 2007 SAM that we use in the CG to, uh, for example, the, the energy balance uh, of 2007. Um, on the energy side, uh, we're using uh, the South African Times model, um, which is maintained, developed and maintained at the Energy Research Center. Um, and this is a, it's a, a SATAM is a full sector model, which has all the supply and demand sectors represented of the energy sector. Uh, but in this exercise, we're using only the electricity supply component um, of, of that model. So Times is a model generator, it's a modeling platform. It's got the same, it, it's also a ga well, it's technical detail. Um, anyway, it was developed by IEA and, and is used by um, various organizations around the world. And we kind of plugged the South African data into that. It's an optimization model, um, satisfying, so minimizing uh, total system costs subject to constraints and the parameters of constraints would be the demand, um, reserve margins, uh, resource constraints, and parameters would be things like um, describing uh, the load profile, fuel prices, um, existing power plants uh, and their retirement profile, and then characterizing um, new power plant options. 
So these are the two models that we're trying to get to talk together. Um, <coughs> so starting with the economic model, uh, we do a run to uh, 2040 um, with endogenous uh, capital allocation and the electricity sector as it is in the base here. So it's um, completely um, kind of as it was in the base here and just carries on um, without changing. Um, we get the first pass at the electricity demand, which we plug into the energy model. And in the, en in the energy model, we kind of we can start imposing so, um, some constraints such as um, uh, CO2 limits or change the um, import limits or inc increase the, the coal price because of the CO2 tax that's imposed. <coughs> and then we get out of that um, over the horizon to 2040, um, the, the makeup for, for one unit of the, the production function for electricity. So per unit of electricity, what are the inputs of now, if we are now relying more on coal and, le and more on gas and less on coal or more on imports and less on domestic coal. Um, so that information gets then carried over to the economic model. Um, we also impose the um, electri electricity price and the equilibrium is then achieved um, through uh, endogenous um, tariff, uh, endogenous taxation and subsidy on, um, to achieve equilibrium. <coughs> um, and we impose the um, power plant construction expenditure schedule that we got from, from the investment program here. So we know every year how much of our investment is going to power. <coughs> and we also know um, when those plants come online and we're giving all that information. So increasing, we're increasing the stock of capital. Um, yeah, I didn't add it here, but it's the fourth item. Is the, that we know that incre uh, from the energy model, we know how fast the, the stock of electricity producing capital increases. And, and also um, the lag, so we're capturing the lag that there is when you're building, for example, nuclear plants, where there's a lag between your investments and your capital um, as the plant takes seven to 10 years to be built. Um, so the problem with, um, the problem with exogenously, with running the, exogenously specifying the, the capital stock to the, to the economic model is that it'll, it'll three minutes, is that it'll, it'll um, try to, um, it'll r run that to the maximum and the demand, regardless of the price, will follow that capital stock. Um, so we use a complicated, well not that, anyway, it's some iterative process, um, which may be better to read in the paper as I'm running out of time, <coughs> to ensure that we're getting some demand response from the price um, and from the composition of the electricity sector. And we obtain convergence. Um, here are two examples. This is the electricity demand in 2030. <coughs> so in the first iteration, well, this is where we start off. And then after one iteration, um, it drops. And then in the, next, in, the second, in the third iteration, kind of more or less stabilized, drifting down slightly. This is in the carbon tax scenario and in a, in a baseline scenario. Um, so we use this linked <coughs> model to look at um, four scenarios, a baseline where we don't impose any um, CO2 prices um, and we keep the, um, we don't import more electricity than we're currently importing. Um, and then we do a carbon tax of $30 uh, ramping up from 2015 to 2024, recycling the, the revenue from that tax by lowering indirect tax, tax rates. Um, and then we do one where we um, open the, the borders, allowing for more imports, and then the, finally we combine the tax and the, and the limited restriction on imports. Um, so on the electricity demand, we see um, the, the demand when we release the import to stay more or less, it goes slightly higher than in the baseline, and in, in case where we have the CO2 tax, it drops um, quite a bit. This is 9% by 2035. Um, and the CO2 tax um, causes quite a big change in the electricity price relative to the base. Um, and we see when we do the combined case where, where we allow imported hydro, that impact is kind of reduced as the hydro comes in kind of in the late 20s, early 30s. 
Um, so these, this is the um, electricity production mix in 2025 and 2035 in the four scenarios. And we see like, so kind of as an, an illustrative case, we, we're, allowed, we're quite bullish on the imports and we're allowed 40% um, roughly of our electricity from, from um, the region. Um, um, this is the emid emission reductions uh, from the baseline where we see here the combined effect of uh, the less CO2 intensive and also the reduced demand from the CO2. Um, on the, this is the socioeconomic impacts. Um, so we get, we get some feedback then from there that we get the stuff that the politicians are interested in, policy makers are interested in. Um, we see um, quite a high, well, we see, so the, the CO2 tax kind of drops the average, uh, this is not average, this is um, deviation from 20 to 2035. We see a small drop in GDP, um, whereas with the combined uh, case, we see a slight increase. And the slight increase, I mean, it's explained quite well in the paper, it's quite complicated. It's caused by the fact that we, we're, as this hydro is rolling out, we're not investing anymore in, in the power sector, and which allows, so the, the, the investment in power sector is normally subtracted from the uh, gross capital formation. So that leaves more capital to, available to the other sectors, and we don't have any of that lag between the investment and the, and the capital stock. Um, and so that results in a slightly, we, we don't get as big an effect when we reduce the, the imports. Um, the, the detail in the CG model also allows to see kind of the winning and losing, losing sectors. Um, and to conclude, um, um, those four points, uh, small negative impacts of the carbon tax on its own, uh, reducing household welfare. Um, and in the combined case, we see some um, potential huge benefits in a CO2 constrained um, case. Thank you. Thank you.